Hi everyone, we're outside of, uh, we're actually in Kobe, Japan right now, and we're outside of the Takenaka Carpentry Tools Museum. And um, we're standing outside the museum and we're about to go in. Uh, what's exciting about this place, it's one of the only places in Japan. Do you hear that bird? Is it a cat? I don't know, I think it's a bird. <laughs> yeah. Okay, are you done? It's a cat. I told you. It's a fat cat. So anyways, we're outside this museum right now. We're about to go in. But what's interesting about this museum, it's actually been uh, started by a, a construction company or a, uh, I guess, a house uh, building company called Takenaka. And um, it's exciting because it's one of the only museums of its kind that actually showcases Japanese carpentry tools uh, as opposed to other museums that just kind of show different joineries and different uh, carpentry techniques, I guess. So there's several carpentry museums in Japan, but this is the only one of its kind that actually showcases tools. So let's go ahead and get inside and check it out. They even, uh, this is a uh, mentori, so they just take away the edge of the uh, wood so it's not as sharp. But normally I see it always really, really sharp, so they did a, they did a pretty good job. It's nice. Concrete. I like these for the rain gutters. So the rain just drips down these and it doesn't splash. Smart. Wow. Each one of these steps is carved. They carved each step, carved from a single piece. <sighs> so we're inside the Takenaka uh, Carpentry Tool Museum, and um, it's really cool because you get all these like models of pagodas and different joints and different tools and stuff um, and what's nice about this museum it goes from like the beginning of the era of building or japanese carpentry up until today and much of it hasn't changed except for the tools have gotten sharper or the materials that they make the tools out of have gotten better um, of course you can start with like this era which is the stone age where are these tools, like this axe, is actually made from stone. And um, this is probably 5,500 years ago. So they used to cut down trees using stone tools, right? And this arrow is called the Jomon era of Japanese uh, ancestry. Um, and of course, it moved on to the iron tools. We have these iron uh, uh, axe heads. And if you keep moving on, you can see all these displays of all these different uh, carpentry tools from a long time ago. And for example, this tool right here is a stone tool and it's super heavy. So you can just imagine how strong those people were back then and how weak people are now. <laughs> and this one's pretty light though, but this, this construction is a little bit different. And this is one single piece of wood. It actually happens to be a branch that they uh, modified into an axe head and this was a common construction of the axes over time and this of course is a stone stone axe head uh, and of course you have all these ones you can't really move oh it says don't touch but uh, yeah and here's a traditional Jomon house 
And actually up in Aomori, there's this uh, village there. I forgot the name, but we actually went there and we actually did some filming. And um, you can see how Japanese carpentry started way back from that time. And no nails, no, no any kind of metal used, right? It was all stones, stone tools to make their structures. But yeah, you can see how they use these wooden wedges to actually split lumber apart so they can make into um, different parts of the house. So this is called the age of split lumber. And they use these wooden stakes to break the logs into pieces. And you can see this Japanese guy right here doing it. That's heavy work. I mean, look how small this guy is compared to the actual tree. It's crazy. So they do all this work to refine the wood, right? So this is, uh, uh, what is this tool called? Chona. So this tool is called a chona, which is um, adz, adzi? I don't know how to say that word. But you can see how they flatten the wood and it chips these. See how you can touch everything in this museum? Not everything, but a lot of the stuff you can actually see how the chippings would come off using that tool. So using the chona, they take these chunks out of the wood and they try to get it as flat as possible. But these are the cuttings that come off of the pieces you can see right here. This is one piece. And then they use a smaller, finer tool, which is called the Yarigana, Yarigana plane, and they get it even smoother. It still has some texture to it, but it's still really, really smooth. And to do this as far back when is pretty impressive. But this is the kind of cuttings that are created from the Yarigane. You can see the Yarigane right here. It looks like a spearhead. Actually, it's called a yarigana, not yarigane, yarigana. But the museum goes on and on and on, and it shows you all these different techniques that they did through the time. And this one is really impressive, how they cut lumber into flat uh, boards. And it's really cool because it's, this is a bamboo runner right here, and then you have these wooden beams that go across. But this blade will cut the wood all the way down. It's a two-man job. So you got a guy on top pulling and you got a guy on bottom pulling. And they just keep working ultimately as a saw all the way down this beam. But the way it works is, I guess they do one side and they flip it and they do the other side, right? Uh, this rope right here, when you twist that bamboo stick right there in the center and keep turning it and then lock it against this bamboo, what it does is it pulls these two arms further in, which in turn stretches this metal so it keeps it nice and tight. And then, you know, they can move this saw blade however close or far away, so they can use this as a guide, you know, and it butts up against this side and then they can actually cut the boards nice and straight. And this, this is called an Olga rip saw. That really long blade, Olga Ripsaw. And the teeth are facing opposite direction. So the guy in the bottom is pulling one way, so the teeth are facing downward. And the guy on top, the teeth are facing upward, so it's pulling through. And all the while in Japanese carpentry, you're always pulling the saw, not pushing. Pulling allows you to make a, a more accurate and straighter cut. And you can see this, this is a one-man saw, which is, this is called a Mae Biki Oga, which is called a wide blade rip saw. But you can see how accurate they can cut. And this is, this is before power and electricity and being able to cut it straight, right? So I guess one guy is sitting down here and just pulling, pulling, and just working his way down. Amazing.
And what I really like about this museum is the displays of all these tools from, I guess, different times. I don't know if these are donated or not, but it's pretty impressive collection. So this place is really interesting because a lot of the stuff you can actually touch and put your hands on. So some of the demos, you can actually physically put the joints together. So it's really fun to mess around with it. Hey, this is probably my favorite part of this museum, is the documents from some of these carpenters. This is a technical notebook for what looks like to be a pagoda on this top one. And this bottom one looks like a, just a pillar. And it shows the drainage and everything. See the, the, the drainage canal? I mean, it's really crazy what they're doing. And the handwriting is impeccable. The detail is amazing. And this is all by hand as well. <laughs> 